Ready, set, rose. Hi everyone, I am sitting with a very, very special guest. He needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. He's someone who is prolific in the business, who can sing high, who can sing low, and he is globetrotting and is making the Caribbean proud. Please help me welcome the one and only Cass de Frontella. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Yes. So welcome to New York. Yes, yes, good to be here. Is weather is awesome. Oh yes, the weather is like it's sweet been great. tea. Yes. Is there anything you look forward to in New York? I just love um, how many different worlds just coexist, mm -hmm. like right next to each other. Yeah. And the food, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a foodie. I love to you know, just sample anything new. Yeah. There's always something new every time I come. Oh yeah. Um, any favorites? Ah, um, wow, this, I just, I like just like to feel, just to experience anything new. You never run out of places, yes. you know what I mean? So I just, you know, I forget, I forget where I go, I just know it is good. Do you <laughs> just stop by the cots and probably have like a chicken over rice with the white sauce? I've have you tried that? I've done that for sure. I mean, I've been coming to New York for a few years now, so, mm -hmm. you know, we after after a party or a show, that's the meal to go, you know Oh, what I and mean? that's very filling. Yes, definitely, and it feels like you've had a meal, like, it feels like it's still homemade, you know, it's it's, it's home cooked, it's, <laughs> it's a vibe still, you know. So, now that you have me drooling, yes. let's, uh, <laughs> I wanted to start off for those who want to get more familiar with Cass, where were you born? Um, I was born in Trinidad, mm -hmm. um, I grew up in South Trinidad, which is more, you know, the countryside, you know, more laid back than yes. Port of Spain, which is the city. By the way, I am a South girl. Yeah, South well. girl, yes, you see, and you understand what I'm yes, telling you. If you know, yes, then you know, yes, you yes. know. It's um, really a, a different way of life, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I guess countryside in any place has the same values, I would say, like the homegrown, yeah. you know, family, you know, close with friends, grew up with them. Like my friends from San Fernando are still my friends I hold close today, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, we grew up in South and, you know, got involved in music in uh, quite a young age. Mm -hmm. We were, I was six, seven, and yeah. my brother was five years older, which is, <laughs> like, so he was 11 and he, you know, he, we loved the rock band mm -hmm. situation, you know. Um, there was a band called Van Halen yeah. with, with brothers, you know, Eddie, and, and you know, and we, we, uh, we kind of mirrored ourselves mm -hmm. against them, my brother really, started the band in a lot of ways. He, yeah. Him and his friend, who was a prolific guitarist, but mm -hmm. he was young, he was 13 years old, but he was amazing. Yeah. Formed a, a backyard band and, you know. Well, I read that, yes. and I also read that you started off at five? At yeah, a tender six. age, you're very, very, very young. Yeah. And I recently met your brother, your brothers, yes. Jan and uh, Hans. Yes. So tell me about how you discovered that you can sing. Well, I mean, my mom has always, you know, you know, has always been uh, both both my, my mom and my dad were always involved in music and mm -hmm. the arts in some form. Dad was more involved in a cultural aspect. You know, um, he would sponsor Calypsonians. He would um, play old mass. He was the Peter Minchel, which is a, a famous um, designer, carnival designer. Uh, called him the Peter Minchel of old mass. You know, so he was very much. Well, he was our accountant by, you know. But in his heart, he was a Calypsonian. And I know there's a lot of people mm -hmm. that, you know, you have your day job, 9 to 5, yes. but usually it's pertaining to arts where you have that passion. Yes, definitely. And you, and you just want to pr proceed with it all the time. Yes. And that's exactly what it sounds like. Yes, he was, he was very, very, um, you know, a part of us learning about where we're from, you know, from yeah. a very deep, deep love that he has for it. He shared that with us and we, we got that from him, you know. Um, and my mom is uh, classical, classically trained, so she's mm. she's a classical singer. Okay. Um, you know, so we grew up. Um, I grew up learning classical and mm. rock music, and you know, and then later on it was more the calypso and soca and dancehall and reggae and all that. So originally, so. It, the band sort of started off with pop rock, the pop rock. We were, yeah, scene, we were right? we were like a little um, like a little punk rock mm -hmm. like a little mm -hmm. group, um, and you know we. We played and played, and then when we were like, I would say, I was my young teens, um, my brothers kind of went deeper into the rock situation, and I mm -hmm. went more into the urban um, stuff like R&B and 
So we were a quartet and we sang, you know, Boys the Men and all these nice right. things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, as a quartet too, you know, harmonizing and all it, it works. And we got really good and I started to like gig at 14. Like I, music became part business as, as a, as a, from 14 years old. Was it a conscious decision between you and your brothers? To it was do a, that? it was a decision of necessity in a lot of ways because we, um, we recently had lost a business that we, mm -hmm. you know, and things were really hard, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was a it was a hard time, and yeah. but during those times you kind of you really really find your strength in, in in what you can do and what you can achieve, you know. Uh, music became that outlet for me at first, and then now then it became a way to not ask my parents for money yeah. ever again, yeah. you know. And so when most kids are probably getting jobs at the grocery store, you were right. actually we were gigging. You were gigging, yeah. getting that real we were, money we or were, some yeah, money no, at least. Fashion shoes yeah. and what? anything we could put our, our you know hands. If they had a bar mitzvahs and from that, we would have been. You would have done it. You'd, we would have been. So there. how was the crowd? I mean, they they were you know I think. You know, we've had a range of shows, you know, like we were we were young so we were finding our way. But I think they were always fascinated that we were we were young and so disciplined in mm -hmm. what we were doing. And um, you know, I kept that we kept that, you know, that approach to the music and the art, the discipline towards it and, and really you know, what you put in is what you're gonna get. So, you know, when it comes to rehearsals and all of that, just making sure it's yeah, were you standard. always going to rehearsal or you were someone like, oh man, I'm tired, or let me go play with my friends, or you were... We were always, I think I was. that was always uh, uh, internal, like, my internal compass always put me there. I was you were always, always focused, or you knew the goal. You, you, you know, I mean, but the thing is, in school I had many different avenues. I was, you know, academic, ac academically inclined, so right. I loved, like, I wanted to be a vet. So I love sciences and all that stuff, and it was, it was really good in school. Are you good in math, by the way? Yes, I, I am not. I love maths. You know what I mean? What? Like, like <laughs> I you could sing, you know, math. I love math and uh -huh. um and the sciences and and, mm -hmm. and and all of that, and mm -hmm. um you know I used to do athletics as well, so right. I used to run. So at 18, I had a lot of choices, which is sometimes the hardest thing, right? Because you at your young age, you sort of have to choose your path. But what I realized is that with music was was the common denominator throughout mm -hmm. my life. Like mm -hmm. since I was six, you know, going up to this point carried me through so many, so many hard times, and it just was my center. So at that age, I said, you know, mom, dad, I, you know, I took SAT and I got like you know, great scores and like, mm -hmm. you know, everything. I was ready to go, but it's like, let's wait. I need two years to do to get a shot with music. Yes. Let me get. Let me. Let me do this for two years. So you were feeling it in your bones. This, yeah, we, this was we all were. And it made it a lot easier when my brothers were mm -hmm. involved as well. Like when your whole family, because my two other brothers yes. were there. Yeah. Um, I really give it up to my parents for allowing their three big sons to explore music. You know, yeah. knowing that we had other options. So were they always supportive? They were, like, they were. I mean, not yeah. say that they weren't scared at a point or two when I started. I had dreads, of course. And when I started to grow my dreads, they were like, we doing. Um, At what age did you start? Um, twenty, nineteen. Okay. But you know, started with the dreads. They like other parents asking, you know, so what's gonna be a kid? <laughs> you know, and that was these, you know, these stereotypes that were, yes. were attached with that, especially how we grew up. But um, you know, that made me actually go for it more. Mm -hmm. The fact that you would judge me according to like right. my hair. Like, it gave you that drive. Oh, like, I was like, oh well, no, I'm gonna grow it. <laughs> <laughs> to see who's who. And music just grew and grew and grew. And um, you mentioned about your brothers. Yes. Did they um, have a big influence with you wanting to do music as well? I think it was always good. Mm -hmm. I, I, we've all had our own personal wants to do music. My, mm -hmm. my brother being a drummer, he was always a drummer. Yeah. Uh, my other brother, who's a guitarist, we always say that he used to, when we were kids, he used to put his, his jersey over his two knees and suck his finger mm -hmm. and the, the jersey would make folds and he would actually do this while he was sucking his finger so he that was some something in him knew that he wanted to feel that sensation on his fingers yeah. and he became when he actually decided to play guitars mm -hmm. he learned he couldn't hold a chord at first and a year right. or two later he was playing Eddie Van Halen leads so he I'd never seen him advance in yeah. something like that so fast anyone 
Um, and then with me with music, it's always been yeah, music. Like I've always loved um, music and singing and loving that. You know, and yeah, I was a little shy as a kid, said, though. It, so if you were shy, that was a form of expressing. Oh, okay. expression definitely. Your way, what you really wanted to say yes, to the world. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, would you consider yourself a fusion band because you do so many different genres? Yeah, I think no. It's it's cast music, you know. Mm -hmm. I think um, we some of this moment is some of all your moments and mm -hmm. I think we've used we apply everything we know mm -hmm. and this we don't leave anything out you know I think everything that you experience in your life is for a reason it's part of a conversation a story yeah. you know and um, you know so we've had you know dabbles of course in, in rock music and in, um, in pop and reggae and dance all and yeah. of course Calypso and Soka why not put it all together you know because when you create, you want to be able to like lie, lie in a bed that you want to lie in. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to only lie on one side of the bed because this. Side, no, I want to be able to just explore. And, yeah. You know, genres to me, everything could mix. We're all and connected. I think uh, music is mood. You can be listening to one genre, but another genre exactly. puts you in a different. Somewhere. Uh, for example, in at the show in Coney Island. Yes. Yeah. Where you, a Kestaban, was the headline. Yes. Um, by the way, what was your impression of the crowd? I blew, it blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. was actually probably one of the biggest and just most energetic crowds we've ever had in New York. You know, mm -hmm. it's just because of these size of venues and yeah. you know, and this one now it's wow, it's 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 the energy was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, people couldn't even get in, yeah. um, so, and you know, just the, the 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 people who support the music, they knew every word to oh, yeah. so many songs and. It's, you never get you never get accustomed to that. You know what I mean? It's it not was something that I thousands of people reciting amazing. your words and and coming back to the fusion. You s you gave them all different genres, which yeah. they appreciated because yeah. I heard the screams in the crowd when I was yeah. doing like Bujibanta. Yes, yeah. and and they were just really loving that fusion. Yeah, and that's where we feel most comfortable. Kind of like space in the middle. Mm -hmm. You know, we are the, the the bridge that kind of bridges a lot of yeah. a lot of people and from different walks of life together. You know, so. Um, Early in the day, mm -hmm. what less? Yes. Very, very popular song, which you I noticed um, it kind of was in your last set last night, and everyone yes. was like, "Yes, what yes. less?" Yes. Uh, how did that song come about? Wow, what less was um, what less came when I was I was fed up with the soap industry. Okay. It's so crazy. Uh -huh. Sometimes when you are the most um, done, mm -hmm. um, everything comes, yeah. you know, flows because you let go. Of a lot of things, you yeah. get over it, and you know, whatever it happens to happen. Mm -hmm. We found that we were doing so much work, but not getting the recognition that we deserve. Right. So you know that yeah, just kind of spun off creatively. I just did what I wanted. We mm -hmm. created a pop album called Stereotype, and then that same year, we just we traveled. We met Kerwin Dubois, right. who was an amazing artist and songwriter mm -hmm. in the soca world, and we went to, to Toronto mm -hmm. in the cold, and um. Freezing cold. In the cold, because sometimes, <laughs> and then I learned something that, you know, sometimes creating music for sunshine when it's cold outside actually gives you a sort of like a... A, a, a happy feeling? Yeah, in a sense of you, 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 you want to counter what's outside. Okay. Inside, you yes, know. Yes. Um, so we did What Less, you know, What Less really came out of those sessions. Two songs came out, Ateng and What Less, and those, you know, What Less really marked... A, 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 a change in our career like mm -hmm. that was the song that opened up so many doors um, both locally and for the people to know who we were yeah. and internationally as well that song really opened up a lot of doors um, in Jamaica and the whole dancehall scene they loved the track um, African scenes and yeah. you know anybody who kind of heard it so it was a phenomenon in its own way. So what less was it written in Canada and the yeah. cold and your and, and with a combination of just the weather and being in a different atmosphere. Sometimes you, you just have need to that, do that change. You have to get out of your space and your comfort zone sometimes. I, I remember travelling from where I was to meet Curran, he lives in the middle of nowhere so <laughs> especially when it's cool. Yeah. You know, and there was no Did Uber. You have a big <laughs> and yeah, everything? there was no Uber. I had to cross the highway over like what? Just, it was an adventure. <laughs> yeah. But, but well worth it. Look so at the much, outcome of so that. So much. So much. So it was just, that's what it is. You know, music is, is being, doing art, you have to, you have to constantly feel hungry for it. Yeah. You have to constantly find that yeah. space. And I'm happy that 
you know, I still have that feeling for, for things that I'm approaching, you know. And, and, you know, you spoke about the tribulation you had, mm -hmm. feeling a little down, yeah. and then what less came out. And thanks for being real, because there's folks out there who sometimes think, oh my God, it's just happening to me. <laughs> but you speaking about it yeah. shows that someone who is so successful goes through that as well. It's all very you, personal. It's, it's all very it's personal. All, it's all, the whole journey is your choices with yeah. yourself. It's, yeah. it's... You know, it's 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 you have yeah you have to be real with yourself and you you're a human being like yeah. everybody else you're gonna go through it you know. And then what less happened? Are you what less? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I'm a dose of what less. Yeah, yeah, me. me too. I am. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess we all are in a little bit, and I think that's what made the song yeah. like resonate because everybody is what less. Yes, absolutely. We love to be a little bit. Uh, what less at yes, times, you yes, know, everything yes. in moderation. Everything in moderation, you know, but my moderation may be different to you. <laughs> I might take it to a different level. <laughs> Let's move on. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I would love to know what inspires you to write music and, um, you know, what frame of mind do you have to get in? Um, life, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 it's really being uh, present, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the moment, you know, and really um allowing yourself to, to to be inspired empty yourself you have to you have to know what being empty is like for instance um you know i call it catching butterflies mm -hmm. in a lot of ways and sometimes you know before being a younger writer ideas would come and i would just let go and be like oh, i'm gonna remember this yeah. and it's gone it's yeah. gone forever <laughs> yeah. so now when i a butterfly comes i hold on to it and mm -hmm. i I stay in the moment. I could be anywhere, and I give art first. You know, I could be, you know, on the train. I could be in the car. I could be. I would park up and sing the idea down. Like I would give. Yeah. I would give it its due respect, like, as it, because you never know when it's gonna arrive. You know. Yeah, you live, and, um, breathe. Yeah, God. this is it. You know, and um, yeah, it is actually a total trust towards your inner compass, and it's. It's scary, but it's mm -hmm. as well um, amazing when you see uh, the beginning and, and, the, and the ending of an idea, of a, of a thought that just yeah. became something real and tangible and real to yourself and people, you know. So, um, you know, I, 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 yeah, I just, I, I want to be present to be inspired, you know. Yeah. Do you have an, an example of something that you thought of? and then it actually came to life oh many things you know i mean everything is a process of that you know it's, it's it starts mm -hmm. with a construct i'm i'm curious by the way yeah. if you're driving and you have an idea and you pull over what do you use because i usually use the notes i on use my the phone. notes on my phone oh you use okay yeah okay. I use, and then I you have, play it and it's so I have much a easier whole heap of unlabeled <laughs> <laughs> the notes that I that I go, ever so often I just go through and re and rename them because usually okay. it's I'm on the go and I just like don't name them. But you have um, a password on your phone, right? Yeah, just in I, case, do, I do. You know, you because know, a lot of ideas are being. What's that. for you is for you. I always say, mm -hmm. and no matter what, it's it's gonna it's gonna align for you as 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 it should. You yeah. know, I, I don't worry about that. If somebody else took it, and I, I you know, hey, choose the under rocks mm -hmm. was for you. I have to say, this year, it really set the bar. The people you worked with, the attendance, the stage display, mm -hmm. it was so spectacular. And yes. I feel, and, and, and I was talking to a couple of media folks in Trinidad, yeah. it is the premier event, t carnival type event right now. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> yes. How did that concept come about? Wow, you know, we've been kind of doing two junior rocks and a form of that when, we were, when I was a kid, eh? But, um, of recent times, we, we, we did a show in a smaller venue called Normandy, mm -hmm. which is more of an intimate setting. And what we did, we, we, we realized that we had so many different dimensions to the band and different types of sounds. Mm -hmm. And the challenge was that in Carnival, mm -hmm. we could not explore all oh, our sides. We had to kind of keep it in context, which oh, is yeah. just soca and just party. and feeling kind of stifled when it came yes. to that um so we said hey well we need a, a place a spot we need a an event to so that the fans can come and experience us 360 and they can experience mm -hmm. the all the dimensions of us in out the season it didn't matter so that was on a thursday mm -hmm. and um so we did that for two years or three years and we sold out that space yeah. 
It so happened and on that year I created Susanny Rocks, the song. Susanny okay. Rocks, the song. Yes, yes. I remember I used to play it all the time awesome. on my morning show. Thank you. All the time on Back and already. Great. Yes, awesome. for sure. <laughs> so Susanny Rocks now was again our um, introduction into one of the early introductions into the dancehall mm -hmm. reggae scene because right. it was a, a Jamaican rhythm. Um, so it was myself and other Jamaican artists, you know, and that song really bridged a lot of gaps. It it it, it kind of raised the antennas for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. my intention really was to say that listen, it doesn't matter if you're from Jamaica and I'm from Trinidad. And once the music, we feel the same, you know, joy from the music. You know, let's bring the worlds together. Mm -hmm. So that's what Tuesday the Rocks is. Tuesday the Rocks really is to bring the worlds, bringing worlds together. One and two. The song was to take that time for yourself on a random day, like a Tuesday, you know, yeah. like you need to give yourself something. And um, it, it, we had to move to a venue because if the venue sold out the first one, so we said, let's do it on a Tuesday and in between Tuesday and it rocks. Like, Brilliant. let's do it. And yeah. we took the, the jump, the leap to do it in a bigger venue. Mm -hmm. We did that for five years and it sold out as well. And then this year we moved to a new event with the oval yeah. so uh, you know that's a good sign you have to keep moving because it's, it keeps it's growing, growing. it yeah. is growing and you know we, now we do um tuesday on rocks jamaica we do mm -hmm. tuesday on rocks toronto mm -hmm. and we're going to continue and we did summer stage on rocks which is an introduction so, so here's the thing when yes. richard messaged me he said you know we'll, we're coming up on a tuesday um right away i'm like Tuesday on the Rocks. Yes. I named it before yes. actually I found out. And, and and you mentioned on stage, this is Tuesday on the Rocks. Yeah, you know. But I want to know, as a New Yorker, yes. are we going to get a Tuesday on the Rocks? Yes, definitely. I mean, that's definitely in the works. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've always wanted to do one here. You know, it's just, again, this is one of those places that, that, that shaped who I am. And, yes. you know, I have so many memories here and so, so many, many amazing people so who, su many yeah, who support, you know, and, you know, it's, it's just a place that we have to, you know, so we we're building that and this was a was an amazing introduction mm -hmm. about coming out on a Tuesday and partying right. with us and oh. because it's a it's a different day you know what I mean Can for you, some I'm about I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about how many people showed up on a Tuesday I'm pretty sure people came from work probably switched up their clothes yeah. and, and just came straight to work some people it, came from other other parts you know some yeah. people drew from you know <laughs> all so over the place. upstate and, and all over these places so mm -hmm. it, it was it was Near and far, you yeah i felt really bad for the people who couldn't come in you know because i know some people really really drove far and yeah. couldn't get in mm -hmm. but you know it, it's still an amazing blessing you know mm -hmm. to really have a, a free event and have everyone just come and just, enjoy just and, off, you know, and, yeah, and celebrate yes well stick on with uh tuesday on the rocks a show of that magnitude what mm -hmm. is the process like to prepare for it in the midst of carnival well i'll tell you <laughs> as it's done um it we start back we start one time so you I'm already a, started preparing i'm already in um building you know the concept mm -hmm. for next year and you know it has to start now like this is just where it's reached in a sense i have to know what i want to see happen what i want to improve what mm -hmm. i want to you know where am I feeling this music is gonna be and then it's part planning but part allowing the gear to take its course and again be inspired so not right. be so held on to One preconceived idea. ideas because mm -hmm. sometimes the year unfolds and I get a inspiration to jump yeah. in it and so that piece may fit here and oh, it forms a whole new thing so it's a kind of like you know an ongoing process. Yes, it's, but, but it starts it has to soon. Start. <laughs> love that. It has to start, you know. You know, Cass, let's yeah. chat about your music video. Yeah. <laughs> let's okay, go. they are unique, very creative. Yes. Um, for the Stress Away music video, username One Trini commented, yes. Cass take the soca music videos on a next level. Level. Oh right! Wow, that's great. That's I have awesome. more to say, but I mean, your music videos really—it's on a next level. I love, um, I love visuals, mm -hmm. and I, and and I'm not gonna lie. If I was not doing music, I would love to have been a part of like production or mm -hmm. just that aspect of it. I still, I still don't know enough. Yeah. But I'm so fascinated to see a director work and a, and a team work. You mm -hmm. know, I've learned 
when teams gel and when teams don't gel like I've like I've seen that and it's a joy I'm, yeah. I'm very much a part of the creative process of each video like I'm in it and I'm trashing it out with the director and we're trying to make it make it work and I'm trying to say this so is you're part I'm of it see. although the, the experts are there you want to give your input so it's like no yeah we, we definitely you know it does come the direction does come from us you know um, yeah. and you know um, I love it. I love the process. I, I don't like to rush it. You know. So for the Hello Music video, JT yeah. said, I'm Polynesian, but I love Caribbean music. Love from one islander to another. Awesome. Hashtag Pacific, hashtag Caribbean. And um, staying on the Hello Music video, I'm going to transition into another type of comment. Yes. Okay? <laughs> I'm helping you read your comments. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so Simran Prasad said, Kes is a whole full course meal <laughs> love the song so the ladies love you what are some attributes you look for in a partner um you know for me it's someone who uh is willing to grow with you mm -hmm. as well you know um what we do what i do is a very demanding yes. job and yeah. Yeah. we would you know it's it's not the easiest Thing to be with someone who is a musician and touring and all of that yeah. we have to have a level of um, knowing with each other and understanding with yeah. each other to be able to you know understand how we could navigate you know it's it's really so you, yeah you can't be weak at heart it's, right, it's, right, it's right. not it's so you not want someone who's mainly understanding what else definitely let me know let me know let me know <laughs> I mean, definitely you have to have a sense of humor and you mm -hmm. must be able to have fun. You okay, know, check, um, check. What yes, else? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, as well, uh, you know, I, I, I love someone with compassion. You yeah. know, I really love someone who is... And by the way, you're very compassionate for someone who is so popular. You open the door, you, you're, you're very humble. And, and yes. is that something also your mom and your parents are together? It's it's growing up. You, and you grew up in that environment. Yeah, I grew and up with that. And it's important for you to Definitely. have that. You know, it's kind of, you know, honoring someone, you know. Yeah. Um, I've been I've been blessed to meet so many different people from around the world and all walks of life. And I've mm -hmm. been inspired by all. Mm -hmm. So I respect all, you know. Yeah. Um, and not to say that sometimes I'm, I, I am not, like, in, in a zone where I can't, like I can't deal with, like, being in public. Like, sometimes it gets, you know, just mm -hmm. being known. Yeah. But I tend, if I'm in those zones, I know I need a energy recharge. I kind of like stay away and I, I do things to mm -hmm. to recharge myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait, no, we're still talking about. You. Ah, okay. hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's yes, right. Yes, yes. So I'm gonna quote one of my most favorite songs: yes. "Loving You." Yes. Loving you every moment of the day of my life, and you know I will be loving you. It is one of my most favorite songs, and it gives me goosebumps. I want to know, is Kes romantic? <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am. I mean, I love, I love, um, I love love, <laughs> you know? Hey, hey, and, nice. you know, at the, yeah. at the end of the day, for me, it's, it's, I love, I love someone that I could, you know, we could do all the extra, extravagant things, you know? Shopping. Oh, well, all of them. Yeah, <laughs> everything, you know what I mean? But I love somebody who could just kick it and relax mm -hmm. and understands what it is to just, I could, I could wind down. I could wind down. I could actually be with you without even saying a word, and we have like that connection. That connection, you know. See? So I like that. Exactly. I love that. I love that. Okay, um, you appreciate that, that range, you know. Where, you know, when it's time to shake it up, we go. We do. Mm -hmm. We do this and we do the other, but we know when to just, so just be. You would, you would prefer like a nice Netflix and uh, you know. Because life is this. Like, yeah, I love to just get away. I like you know. that's a that's good yeah. description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I love okay. to just I love that alone time no and that phones, no no like no one it, it asking for a picture. Yeah, yeah. So even if we're out, I'd love to have a situation where we can have that time. You know, mm -hmm. and this becomes so much more rare. You mm -hmm. know, when it is that you get more successful in your craft. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I look I look forward to it even more. You know, being with that person and just not having any distractions, you know? Yeah. So. Well, what is the, I'm going to make you think a little mm, bit. Um, sure. What is the ideal date for you if you go out? So let's say you pick up a girl and you mm. take her out on a date. What yeah. would that date look like? 
Oh wow, <laughs> it depends. I mean, I like to start with a plan and end with just like we hadn't planned this at all. Okay. I love a bit of spontaneous okay, um, you're combustion. Of course, like I, I, you know, we we could set a plan if we feel you know we may start with dinner somewhere that we you know we both love or somewhere new. I want to try. But afterwards, we can do what we feel. Yeah. You know, I have no limitations to who, what can happen. You know, um, I love the fact that like, when I'm in a, a city that you know people know who I am, but they don't. Mm -hmm. So I can experience everyday things. You we could take like a walk. A normal yeah. person exactly. Just walk down yeah, and, and go have in the that park, romantic stroll exactly. without people coming up to you. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can enjoy anything. You know, what I mean. Um, so for me, it's just. Being able to move with the flow, okay. and you know, wow, we just we end up here, we end up here, and right, just, oh, right, wow, right. you're you know, open to a, that. We had a great time, you know. Okay, so, nice. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're gonna get back to music, but soon I'll ask you some more personal yes. stuff. Yes. Um, you've done collaborations, as I mentioned, loving you with yes. Hassan Chen, yes. Nyla Blackman, Ku yeah. and Dubois, mm -hmm. and you've also done a collaboration with one of Dash Radio's curator, yes. Snoop Dogg. Oh yes! Wow! Yeah. Stress away. How Very does that cool. come about? Wow! You know, we had stress away, and um, we felt that the track was um, a song that you know has a kind of hip-hop it had a sort of crossover feel to it you know mm -hmm. and um it came up we were working with uh, a, a lawyer a lawyer couple uh in la and they represented snoop dogg mm -hmm. and they were like wow you know we, we represent snoop dogg we would love for you guys to collaborate in some way mm -hmm. you know and stressor was just the perfect song because you know <laughs> it just suited the whole yeah, vibe yeah, you know yeah, of yeah. snoop yeah and um you know we so we sent we sent the track from where we have we didn't meet in person right so we sent the music and he loved it and he you know he said yeah he did it he did it uh you know it was just amazing like I, I, just snoop is somebody i grew up listening to you know what I, mean? I grew up listening to doggy style and all those yeah. albums you know and um just for him to say yes because i'm sure amazing. a lot of um Offers come to him, but for him to say yes, it has yeah. to be something that it was he sees cool. a big potential in. Definitely. And know, stress so. away, it's such a good message because we're always stressing, especially for us in New York. The hustle and the bustle exactly. is crazy. Exactly. But you, know, you just press play and you're like, yeah, that's right. That's right. Away. That's right. You need to unplug, you know, for sure. Speaking about Dash Radio, yes. Savannah Grass. Yes. It is my opening. Awesome. Recently, the DJ and I. It's were my opening too. Right it's now. your opening? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> so the other day, uh, DJ Groove and I, who's mm -hmm. the DJ I'm with on Dash, yes. he started recording and I said, no, 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 stop. He's like, what happened? I'm like, you did not stop with Savannah Grass. Oh, we wow. have to redo. Oh, wow. He's like, oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. And this is like the second one I am doing Savannah wow. Grass, um, yes. uh, Dash Radio. Yes. So he knows, wow. but he just slipped up and I'm like, not having it. I have. Thank you for defending. <laughs> yes, awesome. that song, something about that song, I'm even drooling mentioning that song because it is so infectious and just a really feel good song. It just took over Carnival. Awesome. Can you tell us the story behind Savannah Grass? You know, um, Savannah Grass really was um, a song that started in 2017. You know, it was. I came into a, a, a studio that I worked with a guy called Jelani. Mm -hmm. Pops, he's just full of vibes, you know. I go by him once in a while. He played, you know, some music he's working on, and he played this rhythm first. And I, a lot of the melody came out. The Savannah grass came, like all of these words came out. And sometimes when that happens, mm -hmm. you know it's something, you know. This is like 10, 15 minutes into listening to it, like a lot came out. Mm -hmm. We shelved it. <laughs> and he presented something else and we, we went on a whole different path. Then in 2018, in like probably October, it was around so um, the Uber Cruise time, you know, mm -hmm. Soka Cruise, this is Soka Cruise that happens. Um, this song came back up, one of my bandmates was like, what about this idea? Like, and I was like, oh wow, I love this, you know, yeah. this is, and it feels so good, like now, the year of travel, like I feel like, wow, we could dust this off and yeah. when I get back to it was the right time it was and you know a part of me at that point in time felt like the future came and spoke to me in a some in some way mm -hmm. because I felt from that point everything just kind of converged mm -hmm. towards something 
It is almost as if these spirits were telling me something was going to come. Yeah. Um, and you know, my father, you know, he got progressively sick during that time. And you know, we lost him on New Year's Day. Meanwhile, the song is in production. And meanwhile, I, I'm bouncing it off dad because dad was the one who introduced us to the Savannah Grass. So I wanted to make sure, he, you know, he, he understood and he, he, you know, he, he, um, I always do that with, with, with dad. I used to bounce a lot of the music, you know, say dad, listen to this, this is what you want. And, um, you know, he, he listened to it and I remember he really loved, he said, dad's a hit, dad's a hit. Dad uh, you know, it. I mean, he, he did yeah. and he was really much a part of a lot what happened afterwards, like, I, I, I have no doubt in my mind he was there and still is here guiding our way, you know, mm -hmm. I remember doing the video and I just, I just had no strength mm -hmm. and I didn't know, I didn't know like wardrobe, I didn't know anything, I didn't know what to do and um, you were just being led and, and I'm sure everyone exactly. around you were your yeah, to keep yeah. you up you know, because but you as, were really exactly, but everybody emotional. was well, was kind of keeping it together for themselves, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so you know, it just had to happen, and um, I felt like it was really, it wasn't something that we would have waited on, we, we had to push through and, and really bring it forward for daddy, yeah. and um, we did, and it became that, you know, and I, I, to be honest, yeah, I loved it, and I know dad loved it, and that's what mattered, and I think if everybody else loved it, then great, yeah. but if not, uh, I was cool with that too. Everybody else loved, loved, loved awesome. it, but, um, Oh yes, you mentioned if everyone else loved it, that's okay. Yeah. But because it was so special to you and yes. your father, did you have a close relationship with him? Yeah, definitely. We we um you know, again he was always one of our like major supporters. Mm -hmm. He would be in crowds. He would want to know what we we're working on. He would read every. Like, he would know all those comments on YouTube. He yeah. would read. He would sit there. He and would read. comment. There's yeah. one or two him with him commenting. Bunny different dollar. He you was look just that involved. He was very much so. He was our number one. He would mm -hmm. play songs for everyone that could who would stop and listen. You know what I mean? We were like, Dad, oh gosh, that's you know? <laughs> you know, my son, you know, and my son's son, you know? So he was a very proud papa, you know, and um, I was I was happy to share my experience with him, you know. I noticed in the video you have um, a part of him dancing. Yes. And it looks like raw footage. It is. It's actually a f some footage I took off my phone. And you recorded it? Yes, at Christmas time in the family, family house. It was 2018 Christmas? It was, no, it was uh, like two years, two years before. Ago, him we, just dancing. He just took part to the, yeah, my uncle was singing and, um, you know, my aunties and my mom and everybody was there and he was just getting up and doing his thing because he's a mm -hmm. vibes man, you know? Yeah, yeah. As we say in Trinidad, a bacchanalis, like he would, he was that, he was the life of the party. Yeah, he sounds I mean. like the life of the party. He and, is, he and is And even on <laughs> down days, having someone like that in your life, it, it could help you to Definite, you know? see the way. Yeah. Yeah, Dad, that sounds great. Yes. I do have a very special fan question. Awesome. It is pertaining. Um, I met one of your biggest fans recently. Right. Her yes. name is Molly, yeah. and her son, who is 11, they were wearing Savannah Grass t-shirts. Yeah. They love you at, at the uh, Summer Stage concert. They were singing word for word. Wow. And um, she has a story similar. She recently lost her father mm -hmm. and is going through a really hard time. Yeah. And I said to her, if you, I'm interviewing Kess really soon, mm -hmm. and if you were to ask him a question, what would you ask? And uh, she said, to ask you, how are you coping with your recent loss? Because she's having a hard time. It's, 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 it's new. It's an adjustment. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just some days it's just hard. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, what I, uh, how I think about crossing over, you know, what I believe is that you know you share your light with so many people. You expand. Mm -hmm. You live in each person. I think he is much more closer to me now mm -hmm. than you know him in in this life. You know, I feel. Um, I feel so much that he's like, it's just a part of, of, of my everything, you know, when it is that somebody passes, you think of legacy, mm -hmm. you know, and you think of what his legacy is living in me now, yeah. so I, he would want me to live yeah. and, 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 and carry on that, carry on that to yeah. my kids yeah. and everybody else that I could, I could, I could, you know, give the light on to, 
Um, and then we're all walking towards it. Eh? We're all, everyone here has to cross. So then, you know, that, all of that comes into perspective. But then you just miss. You know, you just miss. And yeah, you miss that. Deal. Exactly. I don't, I, don't, I don't hide my emotions about it. If I feel to shed a tear or two, I will. I'll cry. You know, I would, you know, move on. I'll feel better and I would, I would, you know, go with it. But, you know, we are all adjusting as a family and, and everything, you know. I'm st actually, still, the momentum of Carnival is actually still going on. And I think it sometimes just hits you like, wow, you know, Dad, you know, you know, hey, hey, hey yeah. like, talking to me. Yeah. But I do feel you. Yeah, so. you know he's there. Yeah, looking, And he's still proud. He's probably telling someone, that's my son, you know. Yeah, he's I knew Savannah, I told him Savannah Grass was a hit. He's there. Yeah. yeah, he is. I lost my dad when I was nine. Yeah. And it took me a really, really long time. Yeah. And, and people say time heal wounds, but... There is this loss that you You miss. can always feel that pain. Mm -hmm. um, it's there. It's just that you've learned to not let it take over your life. Yeah. But you, it's there. <laughs> that was very profound, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, okay, so on a much lighter um, question, Kim K. Sharma, mm -hmm. she asks the million dollar question. <laughs> Why did you cut your hair? Hey! <laughs> um, you know, uh, hair is a very powerful thing mm -hmm. you know um, when I started to grow my dreads again we spoke about like people judging me yeah because I was growing some dreads and I was like okay cool I'm gonna grow dreads because one I, I fell to and two you know it kind of gave me a gauge as to if you could judge me according to my hair mm -hmm. then maybe we shouldn't like do so like you know we shouldn't yeah, be vibe. Yeah, we shouldn't vibe because... We <laughs> shouldn't be in my exactly, circle. I, yeah, because I'm the same person I, I was. Yeah. So, you know, it became that and then music happened and um, it really became part of the image and all of that. Mm -hmm. It reached a stage where, you know, I just felt like, you know, you're not your things. You're not anything. Mm -hmm. You're not your hair. <laughs> you're not your cars. You're not your clothes. You're not anything. And I just needed a reset mm -hmm. in life, you know. Um, every in all aspects of my life, I needed, it. and the hair was almost like cutting the hair just freed me from, you know, living in a construct. Like I, okay, I became the Red Rasta man, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to just kind of transcend beyond, just you know, because I, you know, who knows? If I feel to grow it back, I grow you it back. Will, but right, right. Um, for now, I was glad to just start over and release uh, everything it just it, you you feel so much lighter hair holds a lot of memory and a lot of things and um, it's good sometimes to just have a spring cleaning and just yeah. start over you know free of it yes. did you do did you cut your hair in Miami or in New York ah that's a secret that's a secret because a little birdie told me they think it's either Miami or New York but um <laughs> we, could, we could keep that a secret unless you yes. want yes. oh, it. No, 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 no. Okay, is. one question. Was it done in Trinidad? I no, guess it wasn't done in Trinidad. Okay. <laughs> Surely it wasn't done in Trinidad. Yeah. Okay, so I have one more um, one more fan question. Yes. And this is coming from Neri Biran, who mm -hmm. is a very huge fan of yours. And uh, she had like 10 questions, and I said, well, just, just one, Neri, just enough. one. Um, she said, what emotions do you feel when you're performing? Wow. Everything. Um, mm -hmm. You know, joy, um, praise, I feel sexy, mm -hmm. I feel, um, you know, wow, it, it, emotional. There's a range. It really is an emotional roller coaster, especially to a lot of these songs have different meanings and come from different places. So it's a range of stuff. Um, yeah, you go through it. You go through the ringers when it is that you perform. Most of your songs, do you, you is it based off of what you're feeling and that's the form of expression or it's collectively? It's, it's, it's a little bit of everything. It's, okay. it's sometimes just what I feel. It's sometimes... Okay, so when you're on stage, you're feeling that emotion. Oh, that yeah. Song. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, when, you, when you're performing, you have to encapsulate the, the, the song. Like, you have to 
you know, step into the lane of energy mm -hmm. that that song is. Yeah. Um, just like an actor has to get into a role, they live the role before, you know, they really have to, it's all about drawing a piece of you that's the role, inside yeah. of you, Absolutely. out. You know, and if you don't know it, you have to go and experience it. Mm -hmm. So, I tend to try and get, like, my experience out of the track and what it's saying and, like, what it means to me and how can I portray this to you. Yeah. You know, it's a conversation, eh? Okay, it's okay, a true song, all right. You know? And speaking about sexy, I saw you <laughs> taking off that shirt on stage. <laughs> so I was just hot, you know what I mean? Like, was really... <laughs> Yeah, um, perf stage performances yes. require a certain level of uh, fitness. Yes. How do you stay in shape? Wow, that's a, a labor of love um, because, you know. A labor of love. Yeah. Dedication. You oh can't eat the fried God. chicken that you want, the pizza. I mean, I eat more or less like, I kind of eat like a lot of everything that I'm I want. Jealous. Okay, okay. But um, my work is so active though, like my stage performance is definitely on the, you know, the cardio side mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. you really have to have a level of like core like because I had to learn to jump and sing you know mm -hmm. and you know perf move and, yes. and, and sing when on key. When you're practicing are you doing as much S as that? Not really. Okay. Uh, sometimes like mm -hmm. when I really have to get one out and like, I get this song out and it's really you know feel what it feels like to mm -hmm. just push uh, right, I right, have right. to um I do that, you know, when I'm a more custom and I'm just working on arrangements that really psych out to save it for the show, you know. Okay. Yeah, um, true. But, I, you know, I, I train as well too. I have a trainer, you know, I, I, I go. Where do you find your time? Uh, like, I how many to. days a week are you training? I, as much as I can. Like, when I go home, if I'm home for three days, I go for the three days. If I'm home are for they four. hard on you or like, no, you're, you're a cat, so I can't. I know those trainers. No, they, they are. are very hard. They no are hard. What. They okay. are hard because, okay. you know, they want, they know that their work is going to be shown, so they yeah. want to make sure. Can point. we have a video of you working out? Aye! No, Come on! That would be good. That would be so good to you see you. You know what? Yeah, I mean, maybe they probably have to go there. <laughs> like, um, but, you know, it's... it's a uh, um, Ongoing process. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. You're not too hard on yourself. No, because you, sometimes I fall off like everyone else, you know. Sometimes yeah. I'm like touring. The touring definitely takes. You know, you say, you tell yourself, I'm going to be doing... I'm going to touch the gym in, in this hotel. I'm do gonna, you? I do. Okay. Sometimes I do, you know, you know, you're in room, um, you know, I've, you know, like your push-ups and your mm -hmm. all your things. And you, you know, you keep, I keep it going, mm -hmm. um, so that when I get back in the, in the uh, gym, I'm not like cold and I'm not. Uh -huh. So I really have to. Okay. I do have to keep it up. I try my very best. Okay. <laughs> So we were talking about food. I'd love to know what's your favorite breakfast, yes. what's your favorite lunch, and what's your favorite dinner. Wow. Um, okay. Well, breakfast. I love like like local Caribbean food. Mm -hmm. Like I love that kind of like you know the salt fish and the, and that beaks and and and, <laughs> and, 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 and ackee and salt fish yeah, and yeah, like yeah. you know that just uh, West. I grew up with that. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I love a good English breakfast as well, too. You know I mean, uh, on your next side of things. Mm -hmm. um, I am fairly greedy because, in a sense, I will look at a menu and I'll be like, oh, my God, I want to try, like, five things. I love it. I want to try, like, five things oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. on this menu. And, uh, but, you know, I would say, you guys want to share something? <laughs> you know, what do you want to do? You know, so I'm, I'm really just into food that, that tastes, like, you know, the... I want to taste the soul in the food, mm -hmm. like so. I would go more. I would kind of leave the chains, chain food places aside, okay. and I would more go through the moms and pops and mm -hmm. the one-offs, you know, mm -hmm. where I can get a true culinary experience from, and it could be as expensive as what whatever or as cheap as whatever. Yeah. It just has to have that soul aspect, and I can tell, like I can tell around, like who, yeah. you know, they, if they put that love into it and it tastes like that. So you're you know? a foodie. I am a foodie, <laughs> you know, like, so I can't say I love one type of meal. Like one of my favorite meals is like, you know, curry duck and boss up shot. Like, I love what? that. Like that to me nice. is like, you know, one of my yeah. earliest loves and I yeah. still love it up to this day. You know, um, you can't have too much curry duck all the time. Right, <laughs> it's not right. so healthy fair, but, no, you know, <laughs> but again, it's all in mood. Sometimes I feel very clean. Like I want to just eat like, you know, the you know, sushi and a good sashimi and a good soup and, right. you know, but again, it has to have that soul. You know, it has, it has to, have to that. be delicious. Exactly. Do you, um, and what's, what do you like to have for dinner? Like some people don't have 
carbs in the night? Are you particular like that? You don't really care. You can have a big bowl of pasta. Because we eat, like, our eating habits are so horrible when it comes to music. Like, mm -hmm. I could be out to studio. I just always want to eat well. <laughs> you always want to eat well? Yes. Like, I had a friend who was... What you put in. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had a chef. He's like, you know, if you eat in, eat well. And I totally agree. A, a chef friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree. I love to go on John's with him and... We would have the best. <laughs> and um, I think, you know, food is celebration. You so know? although you love trying new foods, it's important for you to watch what you eat. Not I, in terms of your worried about yeah. gaining, but just Yeah, like I'm, the, I have a sweet tooth. Like yeah. I have a sweet tooth. So I What's have your to, favorite dessert? Wow, I love chocolate. Like okay. like a semi-sweet like chocolate cake or like that to me, as simple as that is, just really moist and mm -hmm. just ready to go. I'm good, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but... You know, I needed to, you know, cut back on like sugars and stuff. Like it was too much, it was too much refined sugars. So how did you cut? You know, was uh, it hard? Yeah, I mean, sugar is a drug, <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways. So um, <laughs> a little bit of withdrawals, but I needed to, and I feel so much better. Like, um, you know, just choose waters. <laughs> but better option. And, and I think for you as a performer mm -hmm. who is very electrifying on stage, it's yeah. important to know what you're putting in. When I was at the Coney Island stage, yeah. you. Savannah Grass came on, and I'm like, he's coming, he's coming, I know. And you flew out like a jet. <laughs> you were so fast. Uh, and throughout, that was the, yeah. that was really the energy you had. So It's, it's the energy I have, but it's also the energy of the crowd. And it's kind of like the exchange that happens Feeding between the crowd and you give it back and they give you back. But, but you, you know what? I have a friend, Neri. Mm -hmm. She said, I saw Kes perform and there was only 50 people and he was so so dynamic so it doesn't matter the size it, it really is no it's 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 all it's all time together you know and, and people love you so they're gonna go crazy whether it's one whether it's 50 but you know, know sometimes we are in a situation where nobody knows who we are and I actually enjoy those situations where we have to like you know apply all that we know <laughs> and to try and you know win this crowd over however it is mm -hmm. so you know um, yeah, it's, it's, more, it's a little more challenging. It is, but it's human connection, you know. It's really about understanding that, you know, and celebrating that. And that's really, you know, just being there. It could be five people. It could be one. It could be, you know, we could be in a room doing an acoustic set for an office, you know. It just really has to come from somewhere, you know. Once it rings true, I think no matter what someone feels it, if, if, if there's that one person is yeah. inspired, you, you did something. Yeah, you know? your job is Yes. Done. Well, I've been finding out so much about you, awesome. um, even starting at the age of six. Yes. And it's kind of um, really challenging for me to ask you this next question because right. I feel you were, you know, you knew it in your bones that you were made Somewhat. for music. Somewhat. Um, but if you weren't, hypothetically speaking, uh -huh. doing music, yeah. what is, what you think you would be doing? All right, so I would have been... <laughs> <laughs> hey, a long list. No, no, I mean, ah, um, oh, wow, I mean, really and truly, I just kind of did, kind of like everything and loved music so you know it's hard to say it's not um i, I was gonna be a vet i was gonna say oh yeah that's right you um, would have been a vet exactly because mm -hmm. i know i love animals and i love Do you nature own any pets? yeah you know a, a dog a cocker spaniel and a, and a, and a pump pack oh, but i've I haven't had um her name is rosie it's actually my daughter's oh, wow. dog but okay. it's like my dog okay, of course okay, you okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, feed yeah. feed and take care of her and i love so her you, so much your dog is named uh, my oh, my oh, nickname. Oh, 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 oh. My mom calls me Rosie. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. She's yeah, okay. she's yeah. You know, actually, my daughter named the dog. You know, oh, she named she How did. is she, she by did. the way? She's amazing. You know, she's yeah. five and she's five going on to thirty. And um, I you know, imagine. Yeah. so Own sure of herself. Yeah, these days, <laughs> yeah. these kids. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, yeah. What were we talking about before? And the second dog. She just totally uh, distracted me, my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm sure you miss her. I know before I you do. were in a video chat. With yeah, yeah. telling her like good night. You um, had two dogs, you were saying. Yes, yes, yes. A pump He's a little bit older. You know, he kind of like tamp, uh, takes care of the, the, the younger ones and, you know, relax yourself, you know, yeah. to a while. <laughs> but I love them, you know. Um, other than that, I love... You know, again, food, like, mm -hmm. you know, just being involved in mm -hmm. something and that uh, production. Maybe production. you might have been a chef. Who knows? I don't mind doing it all, you know what, what? I mean? Who knows, what? you know? What? 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 Life can happen. Um, you spoke about saying goodnight to Zion. Do yes. You, if you're away, it's important for you as a dad to call and wish her goodnight. Yeah, thank God for FaceTime. I'm not going to lie. Like, mm -hmm. you know, even though she's sometimes frustrated just about it, but I get to see her. 
at least yeah. you know um, and we get to keep keep that connection mm -hmm. going so she sees daddy she every knows day daddy's you know away. every single day um, I make sure and, and, and say hi you know mm -hmm. talk to her and find out how she's going and hear her stories <laughs> well, I want to hear this next story because right, this is a real good one. Yeah, we're coming down to the last of the interview, but this one, you ready? Yes, okay. ready. So, people are saying Marshall Montano is the Soka King, mm -hmm. but Kess is set to dethrone him. Wow, okay. How do you feel about that? Um, and is it something you want to achieve? It's, is it something you, want, you think about? No. <laughs> but I've heard it before. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, um, I think Marsha will always be. You know, we come from a uh, an industry where you know this person needs to be. It's only one number one, mm -hmm. and I think that you know, Marsha really has like how many years in the business? He's really done so much. He's inspired a generation. He's inspired myself as well. Mm -hmm. You know, his dedication and his hard work. Um, I think you'll always be a king, you know, I think we're all, we're all kings in our own right, you know what I mean, in a sense that my, my contribution mm -hmm. to Soka is a different path to what, you know, he has done, I may have followed uh, up on certain things and then there's some similar similarities, but at the same time, I guess, I, th I feel as if we're in different aspects, uh, different, different, uh, perspectives of the in the same industry and mm -hmm. I think definitely we have come into our own in um, the last five years and you know I think people in the in fans of Soka witnessing us coming into our own will have their you know their conclusions of what that is going to be and what's that going to mean well I'm concluding <laughs> Double case sounds good, you know. Has <laughs> King. What do you think about that? Don't leave me hanging out. Yeah, don't leave me hanging. But at the that same time, really I good. think for me, I mean, you know, I, I guess I would love to see all of us become kings and queens. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, one thing I admire about dance hall is that you could love, um, I could love Bounty Killer, I could love Bouju, I could love uh, Bob Marley, I could love Dennis Brown, I could love, I could love everyone. Mm -hmm. And everyone had their corner and had their space. And I believe that's the same thing, you know. Um, should be for Soka, you know. Yeah, and and for someone who started off so young, yeah. and your your involvement is really really incredible, Thank you. and and it's what every artist or entertainer dream of. You want to have that level of success, and you just keep growing every year. Mm -hmm. And if six year old Kess is looking into this picture, would he be proud? It's it's blew mine. I think yeah. I think. Um, I think though, as kids, we kind of, you know, envision the, the blades of grass being people. You, you, you have, you know, these ideas come from somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. And I think we, we all had, we held a vision mm -hmm. of some sort, you know. And there were a lot of moments in my life where I had choices and I had to choose music, and I had to quiet the noise to mm -hmm. choose music. And then I was, wow, this is me choosing, me choosing my soul. Um, so I think yes. It's definitely always annoying underneath it, right. but it still doesn't mean you have to do music. You still have to choose it, mm -hmm. you know. So. <laughs> okay. Um, another very important question. Mm -hmm. I know it's it's very important for you to spread soca music to the world, and that's one of the things I feel um, Dash Radio allows me to do. It opens a whole new audience yes. to... Congrats, by the way, Dash. Thank you. you know, it's amazing. Thank yeah. you so much. Do you see the growth in soca music? Oh, I have so so many years, you know, kind of touring with this and in different parts of the world and seeing it grow. It's been exponential, I think, for the last few years. I mean, so much that you hear the influences mm -hmm. and... and popular radio, mm -hmm. you know, the Justin Bieber's and the Ed Shireen's and all these people kind of dabbling in the energy. They may know, or they may know uh, where it comes from, um, but all in all, it's 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 being, it's resonating in, 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 uh, in, in the continent of Africa, it's resonating in, you know, in the States, in Europe. You know, when you look at Calypso Rose uh, yes. right now, what she's achieving in Europe now, in France, wow, it's just, it's blow mind to see Soka being you know, enjoyed and celebrated in mm -hmm. so many places that um, 
there, it was not available before. I mean, what are your hopes for soca music? I think we are on well in our way to be respected as a, as a, if not already a global genre. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's time, you know. We have our own energy. Mm -hmm. We have our own feel. Like you, you listen to dancehall for a particular feel. You listen yeah. to soca for a particular vibe. You listen right. to rock and roll for, you know, it's its own thing. So um, I think right now, you know, with, with, with people like yourself and um, you know, all, all the all the West Indians working at iTunes and and, and Google and YouTube and all these places, oh, yeah. we all need to come together and really, really push this along. And get mm -hmm. this. Get get it in the Grammys and get us get us a category in iTunes and. You know what, us as artists need to continue to work and collaborate with each other and right. spread the new word. And I think we're on our way. You know, I look at genres like reggaeton and how they really formed mm -hmm. the industry so much. You know, there's the Latin Grammys and all of these things. Yeah, we need to have our You know, own we Grammys, need to, yeah. we need to, you know, and it involves numbers. It's all boiled down to numbers, I think, for the powers that be. Mm -hmm. So we need to con constantly be making those numbers matter and making them bigger and, and really collecting all of that data and letting people know, yo, this is who we are, you know, um, you know, the, the, the push is on. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I just have only two more questions oh. for you. Um, I want you to give a shout out to your band members. Yes. Usually, um, I know they are with you on stage and, yeah, and yeah. always working, um, but and if we can give a shout out to for sure. their names yes. and what their instruments they play. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, Kestivan, you know, we're a big family and it's, 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 it's amazing to, you know, go go around the world with these with these amazing people, you know. Um, so I wanna send big love to my biggest brother Hans. Yeah. You know, he is the drummer, um, mastermind, um, scientist we call him. Um, we have Yon and the guitarist, my other brother. Mm -hmm. um, we have Riyad Buchun, which is the bassist. Yeah. Um, we have Mario Calendar, who's on keys. Mm -hmm. um, Ricardo Rameshwa, he is our keyboardist and musical director. Mm -hmm. um, Robbie Styles, the one with so much energy on stage, our what? DJ, oh, yes. Ableton, <laughs> Guy, Guy with the Redberry. Uh -huh. um, he's definitely a, a force within the band. You know, um, Jared, who is uh, part of the road management, mm -hmm. management team. Um, Simon and Carlin, you know, out in Trinidad management. Um, our technical team, definitely. And, you know, Corey. Uh, big up to Raviel, Lucky Ram, Richard, uh, Screens, oh, yes, Richard. yeah, <laughs> Prince for lighting. Um, you know, we all we all make this happen. You know, we're, we're a, a ship, a ship of <laughs> pirates just going across the world. You know, oh, you have a whole team. What's next for Cass? Wow, well, what's the next? Man. Yeah, what's <laughs> next for us? I mean, we have an album coming up. Mm -hmm. um, that we're working on, mm -hmm. and as well too, we're developing the Two Journey Rocks, Two Journey Rocks brand in mm -hmm. different places. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, again, we did Toronto, Jamaica. We want to see one in New York. New York we want to yes. see one, you know, yeah. in, in in the different places. Yeah, and different um, places. so we're continuing to grow that. We're continuing to bridge the, the gaps, you know, mm -hmm. um, between genres, you know. So again, in, you know, Latin market, the African market. We, mm -hmm. we constantly collaborate and producer on a producer level and an artist level um, and as well to just you know stimulating our own industry right. you know um, like I want to see more live bands mm -hmm. out in the roads other than just us and a few others like I want to see Soka being presented to the world live mm -hmm. um, again and that involves us planting seeds back home you know and really really letting people know that this is it can happen, but you know, of course, with work, you know, yeah. we have to do what we have to do. You know, oh yeah, so, so um, can can just talk about it, but come together and yeah, support each other and drives and actually, you know, yeah. put put a few things in motion. You know. Okay. Yes. So the very last question yeah. I have for you is: When future generations look back at you, what would you hope that they see? I mean, I just hope I made a difference. Mm -hmm. I hope I I inspired. I hope um, you know I gave all that I had to give and I didn't keep any. Mm -hmm. I just gave it all, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I've had the privilege of speaking to my elders, you know, um, and talking to the older Calypsonians and I realized that um, how much they've done and uh, how much we enjoy now as this generation from what they've, you know, pushed through. Yeah. So I want to do the same for the next, you know. I want to push you and break a few walls down so that they don't have to go through what we went through. That's you know? 
commendable. So that's what it is, you know? And and I feel the genuineness, mm -hmm. I mean, even meeting you for the first time recently, and I can tell that you're really compassionate and, and genuine and just a true person. You were, you grew up very well, and, oh, thank and you. with your brothers, too. Thank so you. Mom and Dad, great job. Yes. One other thing, I do want to give a shout out to Man Made Music for yes. allowing me to use this space. It's amazing studio, though. It's, it's yeah. What are your thoughts? I love it. I love it. Darren I love the size. I love. Yeah, the tour is awesome. You know, um, I love. Obviously, I love a studio with a live room and, and yeah. all of that. You know, it's great. Good so stuff. thank you so much. Shout out to Man Made Music on Broad Street. And until next time, we are saying goodbye. Ready, Ready set, 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 Rose. rose.